Welcome to Alaska Matters with Chris Story. To reach Chris, call 226-3933. 226-3933. Now, giving you something to talk about, here's Chris Story. Since the Joe said they'd offer a dollar nine the DLT of the 49ers win, or a 99 cent quarter pounder with cheese the Broncos win, the rivalry's become so fierce here in Homer that I've been forced to call out the local militia. Unfortunately, he's ice fishing. Okay, okay, to keep this in Homer, McDonald's will offer both a dollar nine the DLT and a 99 cent quarter pounder after the game, no matter who wins. Thank you, McDonald's. Diet Coke for all you boys. Except you, Emma. That's a classic McDonald's commercial, courtesy of John Calhoun. He was the star of that commercial. If you ask him, he'll tell you that he not only starred in it, he wrote it, he made it, produced it, he made it possible, but in fact, he did make a handsome salary off of that. I don't know if you remember that, but that was during the, uh, was it the late 80s, there was a Super Bowl rivalry, and we're going to play three different commercials, that being the first and most important, because John Calhoun is, of course, part of the story team here at Story Real Estate. You're listening to Alaska Matters and Simulcast. We're coming to you on KPEN 102 FM as well as KGTL AM 620. Thank you for joining us. We have a special treat in store in studio. We have the owners of Alaska McDonald's here on the peninsula, Scott and Dina Cunningham. They have Kenai, Soldatna, Homer. They're our favorite place to go get a great meal anytime. And we're going to find out what the secret sauce of success is in Alaska through good times and bad, and you're going to learn a great deal whether you're in business, thinking about going into business, or you've been contemplating doing something different with your life. I think this show will be so important to you. I encourage you to listen to it again and again on our website at radiorealty.us. Radiorealty.us, Alaska Matters, will be podcast in the center of the page later today. You'll be able to hear that and, again, hear some great advice from some great entrepreneurs, restaurateurs, and great Alaskans. So stick around. Also, you'll have an opportunity to win a Blackwater Bend Mindbender coffee card for free, and that'll be in just a moment. But first, I can't go another minute without saying thank you to the Homer Food Pantry and Share the Spirit. Sherry and everybody at the pantry and Share the Spirit, 300 turkeys will be given out this year, this week. We did 200 at Thanksgiving. Tiffany and I went up to Soldatna, delivered back down here 200 turkeys from the food bank. This time around here at Christmas, they said we need 300. I said, I can't do it. That's too much for our courtesy trailer here at Story Real Estate. We'd love to do it, but we just can't. And I made two phone calls, and the first two people at companies I called said, yes, absolutely. Rick Swenson with CC Insulation has a box truck here in Homer, and Royce of Carlisle Trucking both made this happen. Carlisle Trucking brought the the turkeys down here. And it was interesting because I called Carlisle, and I said, would you be able to help us out? We're sort of in a bind. Royce didn't even blink, and he said, oh, absolutely. And I sort of braced myself and said, okay, well, how much will this cost? And he goes, you don't understand. We're just doing this. There's no cost. Why would we charge the food pantry to bring down turkeys? I said, wow, that's incredible. And Rick Swenson met them here with his box truck. They offloaded on the Ricks. For three days, Rick helped ferry those turkeys around Homer. And just want to thank both of them. And I guess, say, corporations and companies are people. Hmm, think about that. Thank you very much. Again, you're listening to Alaska Matters. I'm Christopher Story, your host for Great Adventures in the Last Frontier. We'll be back with Scott and Dina Cunningham of McDonald's right here on Alaska Matters. Commit this number to memory, 399-1526. When you need snow removal, snow plowing, and sanding this winter, call Richard at 399-1526. Great Wire Construction, locally owned and lifelong Alaskan operated, can take care of all your snow plowing, snow removal, and sanding needs. If you'd like, Richard will deliver sand to your residence for your use when needed. Licensed, bonded, and insured. Greg Wire Construction, 399-1526. Panoramic Heights, spectacular ocean and mountain views, including volcanoes and incredible sunsets. Live outside of town, but less than 10 minutes from Homer. Affordable land for your dream home. These lots are priced to sell. Owners will finance, and so will First National Bank Alaska. Call Deborah at Bay Realty at 2 235 6183 for more information today. 235 6183 and enjoy the privacy and quiet life this wonderful subdivision offers. 
Or how about 52 acres next door? Celebrate nature. Set amid the rolling hills, peace and privacy can be yours on this 52-acre estate. Live well on this beautiful parcel. Moose, bear, and other wildlife are here to greet you. Come home to a secluded estate, away from the world, but within driving distance to everything. Urban farmers and ranchers will find this a true delight. Call Deborah Lysick at Bay Realty at 235-6183. When you need results, Bay Realty works. Oh no, I was taking a bath. I'm out of water. No problem. Call more and more your locally owned water supplier. 24 hour service from your locally owned water company. Tired of working with an outside corporation? Want to support local business and get better service for less? Then put more and more to work for you. 235-8837. More and more is next door. 235-8837. Alaska Matters is brought to you in part by Blackwater Bend, keeping Alaska awake and perky for over 10 years on the Sterling Highway halfway between Homer and Anchor Point, your year-round headquarters for expertly crafted coffee and tasty treats. Make Blackwater Bend your coffee shop. Hey, what's your name? My name is Bobby Triplett. I am a barista here at the Blackwater Bend. My favorite drink for the season is a raspberry by Chai. We are open from 5 a.m. in the morning, crack of dawn, till 7 p.m. at night. Couldn't care less who wins the Super Bowl. Until this year, because if the 49ers win, McDonald's will serve up their McDLT for just a dollar nine. We're pulling for the Niners. He's the family in Tampa. But if the Broncos win, it'll be a quarter pounder with cheese for only 99 cents. I want a victory so bad I can taste it. Well, a sip of my Diet Coke help. A dollar nine McDLT for a 99 cent quarter pounder. May the hungriest be me. What football fans from way back? Since yesterday. <laughs> I don't know why all these years later, they'll still make me laugh. That's funny. Welcome to the program, please. Scott Cunningham and Dina Cunningham, owners, operators, and entrepreneurs, uh, restaurateurs here in Alaska on the peninsula with McDonald's. Welcome to the program, both of you. Thank you, Chris, and thanks for having us. Thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. Hey, keep it quiet there, Dina. Knock it off. Blackwater Bend is also a sponsor of the program. We want to thank them for that. And when you're headed out of town in the dark of night or the dark of morning or early afternoon, you see the lights of the Blackwater Bend Espresso and you smile and you say, you know what, that's just what I need. A cinnamon roll, eggnog latte, peppermint mocha, gourmet, handcrafted coffee to perfection. <sighs> yes, Blackwater Bend, that's just what you need. Here's the question, and you could be going for free. It's a trivia question, and all you need to do is dial and smile, 226-3933, 226-3933. Tiffany is standing by. We have all seven lines open. Remember, seven lines, one minion. Answer quickly, 226-3933. Be one of the first two to win a free coffee card at Blackwater Bend. What year was the Big Mac born? What year was the Big Mac born? Was it 1968 was it 1955 or 1980? 226 3933. 226 3933. You'll walk away with a free coffee card from Blackwater Bend. Call now. Tiffany is standing by. I'm not paying her to sit out there and look good, folks. 226 3933, although she's doing a fine job of that. So, Scott and Dina, those commercials go way back. They actually precede your ownership of McDonald's. Those were late 80s or. Like not right at 1990. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, it was the Super Bowl of 1988. Okay, so just a few years before you entered the ownership realm here in uh, Homer with McDonald's. So my question, though, first, Scott, we'll start with you. What is your earliest experience? Because I think everyone's got one. Everyone can relate to the first time, as a child or or a childlike man like Dave Webb went to McDonald's. What's your earliest recollection of McDonald's? Well, my earliest McDonald's memory goes back to when I was about five years old, sitting in the car, eating a cheeseburger on the parking lot in San Diego. <laughs> Dina, how about you? Um, I remember going to visit uh, uh, my local McDonald's in uh, Boise, Idaho, where I used to live, and seeing Ronald McDonald. Okay. Yeah. So Ronald McDonald, and in what? I mean, was he? Was it the live costume, or was it a, a model, or what? What was it? It was the real, true Ronald McDonald. Oh, the real one. Wow. <laughs> I see. I've only met imposters. I've never met the real one. That's incredible that we all have this association. And about what ages do you think? Um, I was six. Six? 
I would have been about five. Five. Yeah, me too. See, I go back to about five years old because we went to Florida to visit my family. And growing up in Homer, Alaska, there was no Golden Arches. There was, you know, there wasn't. There just, but we saw some of the commercials. We only had two TV stations at the time coming into Homer, and one or two of them would play a commercial, and it was it was like this idyllic place. Just could not wait to go. And I went with my grandparents. In fact, I would believe it or not, was a bit of a rotund boy. And my grandfather was a rather large man in Florida, and he, we, so we, I don't know why we did this, but we all named each other something different. So my grandpa was uh, the Big Mac. My sister at the time was the straw because she was skinny mini, whatever. And my brother was also slight, so we called him a French fry. And anyway, we all had funny names for each other. And that was, uh, so every time I go there or drive by, I think about my grandparents and have a really fond memory and uh, go back to a great experience so thank you for that when did you first go to work for mcdonald's so we remember your your five and seven when you experienced it when did you actually go to work for mcdonald's um i started when i was 16 years old in mm -hmm. port Angeles, washington um i i got a summer job to pay the car insurance so i could drive the family kid car and uh for me it's the only job i've ever had and i um Met Scott there and and just built a career out of it. That's incredible. So you met Scott. What kind of guy was he like then? I mean, was he the guy goofing off and spilling the fry oil and stuff, or was he pretty serious? Could you see that like this guy's going somewhere with McDonald's? Um, for me, it truly was love at first sight. Mm -hmm. And uh, he actually transferred to my restaurant as the manager. <laughs> and. Uh, a little while later, I transferred to a different store. <laughs> <laughs> Need we say more? Oh, that's classic, Scott. And back to you. <laughs> uh, I actually started 1979 in a suburb outside of Cleveland, uh, making two dollars and sixty-five cents an hour. Wow. Was that minimum wage? That was federal minimum wage at the time. Huh. Incredible. Um, and I was a bass player in a rock band. I was in tenth grade. <laughs> and had no intentions of staying at McDonald's, and here I am 33 years later. Right. Uh, for whatever reason, fell in love with it. Walked through the doors and said, you know what, I fit here. And a couple years later, or excuse me, a few months later, I moved to western Washington. And That's when you met Dina. That's when and met Dina. Uh, base career, where did that go? Well, okay. um, <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere? Well, To the basement? Yeah. Um, yeah. Bought a little acoustic guitar and it kind of collects dust in a corner. Okay, well that's interesting. I'm I'm trying to picture. Were you? That would have been the era of Kiss, maybe or a lot of, of Kiss. Yeah, Zeppelin, Aerosmith. Okay, so that's that's what your inspiration was, and then you you met the McDonald's system or the McDonald's family, and it, you said, hey, this fits. And so you were working in Eastern Washington with Dina for you know how long before you said, you know what, we want to enter the realm of, of management and take this to the next level. And then next thing you know, you're, you're owning in Homer, Alaska. Uh, so I guess it's it, a lot of questions at once. So how long were you working together before you said, I'm into management? I mean, two years? Well, what, was, what was the track like? We didn't meet each other until a little bit later in my career. I started in 79. Um, as I was getting ready to graduate from high school, the store manager. Uh, that was the year Dina was born, by the way, but go ahead. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Close. Uh, um, as I was getting ready to graduate from high school, the manager came to me and asked if I had any desire to be promoted into the management ranks. And uh, for whatever reason, jumped at the idea, jumped at the uh, prospect of becoming manager. And honestly, I've never looked back. Uh, so so you that went from two sixty five an hour to what? Like five or four bucks? Oh, or? the most the largest hourly wage I ever made was four seventy five. Oh wow. Okay. Uh, and then oh mid eight well, I guess early eighties I got promoted and put on a base salary as an assistant manager. Uh went into becoming the restaurant manager. From there I became an area supervisor for an owner operator in western Washington. Uh, was an area supervisor for him for three years, and that's when we applied to buy a McDonald's to become franchisees. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that we had any intentions at the time of coming to Alaska. But that's where the opportunity was. But that's where the opportunity was. Followed it. We actually came up here, I think it was Easter weekend in 1992, to take a look at the store. And it was probably still snowing. <laughs> there was been. snow on the ground. Yeah. And and Scott forgot to just mention that we did get married before that. <laughs> <Right>. A little, <laughs> so, little step in yeah. between there. We were married uh -huh. and um, decided that we would like to pursue becoming owner-operators ourselves and then got the phone call to come and look at Homer. Yeah, and so management trained you 
to be prepared for ownership. The the system and the, the, the training that it takes to become a manager led you to believe you could also likewise own and, and you could do this and you believe that. Correct. <clears throat> McDonald's does have a back. franchisee development program where they go through and a lot of it's insurance, financing, mm-hmm. uh, that that sort of stuff. The restaurant management portion of itself will take care of your labor costs and your food costs, utility costs mm-hmm. and those. So. Well, you read about, you know, Ray Kroc, and obviously he didn't start McDonald's, but he was the one who took it to the next level in about 1955, if my research is correct. And the systemization that he brought to the franchising and the, the supplying and all, all of the details that make McDonald's what it is, in addition to the people, you read about it constantly. We read about it, whether it be Michael Gerber and his e books, or I was just reading another book called Great by Choice, and they're referencing Ray Kroc, McDonald. I mean, it's everywhere, articles and so forth. So I guess my question is, now that you've been in the trenches, you've been on the fry line, you've been, for lack of a better term, fry line, and you've been a manager, you've been, now been an owner for nearly 20 years, can you take the McDonald's philosophy that you've learned and apply it to other businesses? Like if I said, hey, would you start this business or do this? Can you take what you've learned there and apply it to any business and be successful in your opinion? I think the answer is yes. I think um, McDonald's is is such a well-structured company. Mm -hmm. We have so many resources available to us, whether it's um, legal or um, human resources, things like that, that that apply to any any business. Um, So if we were to, you know, choose to retire from McDonald's and do something else, um, you know, I feel very confident that what we've learned and developed through McDonald's would make us successful in something else as well. So, I mean, it's cross-applicable. Yes. Yeah, you could enter the real estate business. We could. We heard that's pretty tough, though. It is. Yeah, <laughs> stay out of it. <laughs> stay way out of it. Do you set goals for yourself personally, Scott, as well as for the business? Is that part of your life? Yes, we do. Uh, we set uh, annual goals every year, uh, what we want to accomplish in the upcoming year, and then we review those monthly and just make sure we're on track Mm -hmm. uh, in the areas of people, development, and reinvestment, staffing, getting ready for summer. Um, How much lead time do you get? Because you've set your goals personally, right? Let's say it's January or whenever you set them. Do you set them in early the year, or do you have some other calendar that Um, you work with? We started our 2012 planning uh, in October. Okay. And we um, actually do that with our three store managers and our supervisor, and we plan as a company our goals and targets, and then individually as a store. How much lead time do you get, though, from corporate? So you've set your goals for the following year, and then all of a sudden corporate says, by the way, we're bringing back the McRib. Well, we have a... Uh, uh, does it change it? It does, it does change a little bit, but we already have a pretty structured calendar as mm-hmm. far as... Um, new products and and advertising and things like that that we can go off of them some things do change but we're pretty adaptable yeah and and personally so when you're setting your goals in october are you also setting personal goals for you your family and is it all just one and the same i mean it's yes uh we do have personal goals that we're trying to reach uh, like most families right um a kid in college, so yeah. <laughs> it's kind of important. Another yeah. one getting ready to look. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Well, we're, we'll be back in just a moment. We've got our Blackwater Bend mind bender out there. You've got one more opportunity. We have one winner. The question, what year was the Big Mac born? Scott and Dina Cunningham, my guests here at Alaska Matters. We'll give you the answer when we come right back. Now that it's colder and darkness has taken over, it's easy to let it get you down. But you know, one thing that really perks me up, how more and more people are lighting up their houses for the holidays, thanks to Christmas decor by Dutch Boy Landscaping. Dutch Boy makes turning your home or business into a cheery piece of the winter puzzle, minus the hassle of having to find a good spot to base a ladder on ice, battle the elements, or scale that roof. It makes a lot of sense to rely on expert decorators trained in safety and proper installation methods. Christmas decor offers customized lighting displays, garlands, wreaths, and bows. They can design the display, install it, maintain it. They even take down and clean up when the season's over. So if you've been dreading hauling out boxes and boxes of holiday decorations and the threat to life and limit entails, maybe it's your year to leave it to Christmas Decor by Dutch Boy Landscaping. Find out more about brightening up your place with professional holiday decorating. Contact Danny at 235-7140. 235-7140. Christmas Decor by Dutch Boy. Call now. 
Hi folks, Jackie Ray here for the Caribou Family Restaurant. The Caribou Family Restaurant wants you to remember how happy, happy, happy you were Thanksgiving. Past Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. Valentine's Day, how happy you were with the service, how happy you were with the highest quantity of food. More than you can eat every day at the Caribou Family Restaurant. How happy you were with the quality of food. How happy you were with the prices for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In fact, the Caribou Family Restaurant wants you to remember each and every time you hear or see the word happy, how happy, happy, happy you were with sumptuous prime rib on Friday and Saturday nights, breakfast any time of the day or night. So if you want to be happy again, stop by the Caribou Family Restaurant and be happy every day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Lake Street and Pioneer Drive in downtown Homer. Check it out. Be happy every day at the Caribou Family Restaurant, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. See you here, 235-5148. Orders to go. For Radio Realty, I'm Chris Story. There's good housing news all across the country and right here in Alaska. Interest rates are at record lows, inventory shrinking, and sales are up. The bases are loaded, and we're at the bottom of the ninth. No idea what that means, but seriously, if you're thinking about investing in real estate, now's the time. Join me every Wednesday at 1230 on KPEN 102 FM and online at RadioRealty.us. You really can make a million bucks in your own backyard. Well, 49 is one. Yay! Uh, the McDonald's everywhere, even in Homer, Alaska. The one of the winners with the $1.09 DLT. Drink out the Diet Coke! But should Bronco fans lose just because their team did? Yeah! Of course not. So they'll still get their 99 cent quarter pound of a cheese. Even though they didn't win. But we played our little hearts out. A dollar nine to DLT and a 99 cent quarter pounder. We'll end the time. We're going to watch the Super Bowl every week. <laughs> we're going to watch the Super Bowl every week like we're a bunch of hicks up here. But that was a very successful campaign for McDonald's. And speaking of successful, my guests today are Dina and Scott Cunningham. I have reversed the order. I introduced them first as Scott and Dina Cunningham. And then what I've witnessed here, folks, in the studio leads me to believe that I need to say Dina and Scott Cunningham. There's been a lot of elbow nudging. There's been some direction coming from her side. But it's like any successful business and marriage coming together. There's... Yes, as Dave says, it's just as Tiffany does to me on a constant basis. The only reason she's not in here elbowing me now is because you two are here, so thank you. So our, our question, our Blackwater Bend mind bender question was, what year was the Big Mac born? Scott, would you answer the question for us? 1968. Yes. Ashley and Greg, you are our winners. You are our winners, and you'll be going to Blackwater Bend for free. Come down here to the corner of West Hill and the Sterling Highway and claim your prize. We've got two uh, coffee cards. Well, one for each of you. Don't get greedy now. Okay. At some point, you decided. So your your teens working in McDonald's. You fall in love naturally, and with McDonald's, and then meet each other and fall in love. You get married. You move to Homer, Alaska, and you're now owners within the organization with with which you both started at a couple of bucks an hour. Incredible success story. And then you decide to expand your footprint, and you're going to move out of Homer, and you're going to move into the Sildotna uh, Central Peninsula area. So. You said that wasn't initially part of the plan. Was it just an opportunity that you just said, I can't refuse this? Uh, when we first moved up here, somebody had told us that um, the owners in Kenai and Soldatna were most likely going to be retiring after their children had graduated from high school. Mm -hmm. So that was at the in the back of our minds anyways. Um, and the opportunity presented itself in 1994 to expand into the Kenai and Soldatna area. Yeah. I mean, that's a big... Step. I mean, that's that's not just um, eh, you know. I mean, that's a big deal. And so right now we're looking. At, and I remember in the early '90s there was a real estate, you know, bubble that had burst. And across the country, economically speaking, it was a little bit of a tough time. Maybe similar to what we see now. Were you worried at all about the level of risk you're taking on by taking on two more stores? Uh, I I think yes. I um, anytime you know to go from one to three stores was mm -hmm. challenging in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, we had a um, a small child at the time, mm -hmm. and um, uh, made the decision to move up to the Kenai Soldatna area. But you you tripled your workforce, tripled the amount of work and liability and responsibility. So, right. um, but it's been very good, and uh, we're glad we did it. Yeah. What advice do you have somebody that right now is looking at their own business and saying, you know, I'm at this level, I'm thinking about taking this next opportunity, but I'm worried. I'm worried about the economy. I'm worried about the level of risk and liability, and or just 
doubting whether they can do it. Do you have a, a piece of advice of, of how they can jump that hurdle, Scott? Well, if you already have an existing business and you're looking at growing it, uh, the first thing you probably want to do is identify that there's a marketplace for your product or service where you want to grow to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the second thing would be make sure that you can give your growth the support and nurturing that it's going to need, whether it's your own personal time or whether you're going to have the resources to hire uh, employees or staff to manage it for you. How do you how do you calibrate that? I mean, is there a formula that you would use or recommend, or is it is it a gut level, or is it different on every industry level? Well, we're fortunate enough to have the power of McDonald's behind us, mm-hmm. and with all their demographic teams and real estate departments and whatnot. Um, I'm going to guess that it's going to be a little bit of gut, yeah. And it's something I think you see here in Homer, the people that come to town with a new idea and they Mm -hmm. open up shop some of them are still here two three four years later some of them aren't yeah Um, there's a lot of risk in being an entrepreneur and going out and opening up your own shop you are an entrepreneur both of you sitting here I mean I the the three of us in this room we're all small businessmen we're all and women and entrepreneurs and it's easy to forget when you've got the, the the corporate logo and you've got that behind you but you Scott and Dina, you are employing people. You employed my daughter. Thank you. When she was 16, and and you know, hey, uh, she you know she learned how to count change there. Thank you. I mean, there's so many opportunities you've provided to people in addition to the other good works you do in the community that I think that you know maybe gets glossed over a little bit, or we tend to forget that when we see the you know the arches or what have you. But it's really a small business. So you're re- you're telling me that in deciding what you do within your own business, you also you don't rely just on what corporate's telling you, you've also got your own gut instincts and your feelings as you as you move through your own business. And I agree with that, and I appreciate you um, clarifying, clarifying the difference between the arches. You know, we're fortunate to have be part of such a great company, um, but it's really Scott and Dina. Right. And we, we have the same struggles as other small businesses, and we have the same rewards. And, you know, month to month, um, you know, our, our sales change and, and what we um, are able to do and support in the community. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all driven by us. So. Yeah. When you think back over, gosh, nearly 20 years, if math serves me at this time, and you think about your story starting at 265 an hour, or meeting each other in McDonald's, working together, and then later for him and moving to a different store, as you said, that's going to be an awkward drive home. Um, wh- what stories in house or what success stories have you seen or, or could share with us that are just sort of that? Give somebody a piece of inspiration that's working right now, arguably much higher than that, but still minimum wage. What makes us think that they can go anywhere with this? What what can they do from where they stand right now based on what you've seen over 20 years? Well, over 50% of McDonald's corporate management started as crew people. As a matter of fact, uh, really, right now, Jim Skinner, the CEO of McDonald's, started as a crew person when he was in college. Hmm. And... There was just a fit. It, and and it this clicked. is national. I mean, this is in the national corporate Well, that's management. global. Global. He, he is the CEO of McDonald's. <laughs> um, the president, the current president of McDonald's USA, Jan Fields, uh, was a military wife, and her husband got transferred to Tacoma, Washington, uh, sitting at home, and decided to get a part-time job, went down to the corner of McDonald's, got a part-time job, and... Uh, here we are 34 years later. She's the president of McDonald's USA. <laughs> um, That's incredible. You know, uh, Dean and I have not shared in quite the successes that they have had, but been very successful starting as crew people and working our way up to owner-operators. We have a couple of people that work for us who have been with us since we bought the restaurants. Uh, a couple crew employees, a couple management people. Uh, mm-hmm. One of them was my store manager down here in Homer for a number of years, Jeff Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, Great guy. His third child was actually born down here. Yeah. Um, the gentleman you mentioned about Carlisle, uh, oh, Royce, Royce, who yeah. helped yeah. Uh, ship the turkeys. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He was an assistant manager for us for four or five years in the late nineties. Interesting. Yeah. So a lot of people have gotten a, just a basic work foundation from us. You know, working to show up on time, work. They're mm-hmm. learning how to be dependable, work right. as a team, work right. with other people, follow a schedule. Right. Dina, you agree? I, I would. And I, and I think for me, um, 
you know, when I started at 16, it was the last thing I wanted to do was to work at my local McDonald's. Mm -hmm. And I just fell in love with it. And I think if I were to say anything to anybody is hard work counts for a lot. And when you, you know, find yourself in a situation and, and it may not be the job you were thinking, um, hard work and dedication and, and you can go a long ways. Do you still enjoy going to work? I love going to work, and I actually wish that I could be in the restaurants more than I can. Mm -hmm. um, we spend a lot of time doing paperwork and things like that. Yeah. I love the um, the employees, the, the mixture of employees we get. I love the customers, and my favorite thing is to take is to watch an employee. It's their first job, whether they're 14, 15, or 16 with us, and they come in and they don't know what it means to be on time, and they don't know what it means to work as a team, right. and to watch them grow and develop. You know, and either stay with us or then move on is, I just, it's so rewarding. I love that. Scott, just in the remaining minute, literally, we've got, where do you go from here? Um, that's a tough question. Uh, we're happy with Alaska. I mean, Dean and I see ourselves living on the Kenai Peninsula until we're done working, I think. Um, never would have guessed that 20 years ago when we moved here. That's incredible. Thank you, Scott and Dina Cunningham, owners of McDonald's here on the peninsula. Great success story. Thank you for sharing it with us. And by the way, those people you mentioned that start out as crew chiefs and now are president and all that, they've never been on Alaska Matters. So <laughs> oh, you, That makes us better. You well, thank win. you. You win. Thank you for everything you do for your community and sharing your, your success with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, you can find this program at RadioRealty.us, RadioRealty.us. For all of us here at Alaska Matters, Dave Webb, Tim White, Dave Becker, happy day to you. The Peninsula's home for unforgettable favorites. Great listening, 620 AM, KGTL, Homer.